In this video net interview, we're talking to Stephen White, CEO of Gracenote. Hi, Stephen. Hi. In one of the uh, technologies you're highlighting at IBC is targeted advertising. That's correct. Uh, dynamically replacing the existing ads in broadcast channel for more relevant ones in the in in for each household. Why do we need that? I think if you look at advertising today, you see uh, a unicast approach, the same ad blasted out to everyone. Uh, the reality is many of those ads don't apply to large parts of the audience. So what we're trying to do is make sure we're marrying brands with the people that actually care about those product lines and making the ads more effective. Okay, and is this for smart TVs um, or all kinds of television, uh, including legacy population of non-connected set-top boxes in homes today? It's for, it's for smart TVs uh, and connected uh, set-top boxes. We deliver the replacement advertisements over the IP channel, so we do require the device to be connected to the internet in order to support the feature. Okay, and um, uh, this applies to pay TV set-top boxes, so uh, do, you, uh, do you require operator cooperation for this model to work, and um, are they interested? Uh, yes, to integrate into the set-top box, we would require that. The, the first deployment for us is not through the set-top box, it's through the television itself. Okay. Uh, so from that perspective, we're working with the television set manufacturers to integrate the video fingerprinting technology into the televisions and then supporting a broad platform that's inclusive of the broadcasters, existing ad decisioning and ad delivery engines, and then leveraging our technology to trigger those events. Okay, so you use your own video fingerprinting to know what each household is watching at any given time. And this, de de this determines the ads that are inserted. Why do you need to know what we are watching when targeting ad advertising implies that the viewer rather than the content is what really matters? Yeah, this really is about the viewer. Uh, understanding the content that the viewer is consuming helps us learn more about them. Uh, demographic information that's available today through traditional ad decisioning engines is very useful and is a part of the targeting system, but it only tells you so much. The fact that I'm in a certain profession or I make so much money or I live in a certain part of the world only tells you a little bit about me. Uh, understanding that I watch Orange is the New Black versus sports all day tells you a lot more. So what we're doing is blending together the content profile of that user and understanding deeply what that content is uh, and using that and adding that to the demographic information to target much more richly. Okay, and how will this work with broadcasters? Um, are they on board? Do you have any trials or deployments you yeah. can speak of? Uh, we've taken a different approach than some of the other technology providers in the market in that we've, we believe very strongly uh, this capability has to be rolled out hand in hand with the broadcasters. Uh, they control the uh, advertising inventory and from our perspective should continue to do so uh, in the future. So we're not trying to take this out of their hands. Uh, what we've done is created a broad platform, again, that works with the broadcasters to enable this capability. So yes, in the United States where we're initially rolling this out, uh, virtually every broadcaster is on board and working with us. We're in the midst right now of rolling out live trials in multiple markets uh, in the U.S working in conjunction with virtually all the broadcasters and uh, station groups as well, uh, and then the TV OEMs. Um, so do you think the advertising industry is, is ready for data-enhanced advertising, um, you know, sending different messages to a subset of the population? <clears throat> I hope they're ready. We've been talking about it long enough that, that they should be ready. Obviously, it's been more talk than action um, historically. So. Uh, we're finding that the advertising community is, is very ready for this, uh, is, is very much uh, excited about it, uh, and already has, uh, in, in many uh, instances, the sets of creative already there uh, that they would leverage uh, in, in a targeting world. So there's not a tremendous amount of disruption in terms of the advertising industry. It just gives them the ability to be more effective. So, so ultimately, you touched on it, but what is the benefit of this type of technology for the advertiser and the content owner? Uh, well, for the advertiser, uh, it's the ability to better target the consumer that cares about their products. So it's, it's about effectiveness for them. Uh, for the broadcaster, uh, that targeting capability will come at a higher CPM rate. Uh, so for them, it's a revenue generator. And then ultimately, that goes for the TV set manufacturer as well, which is why they're so excited about it. It's a way for them to uh, monetize a user base that today they have challenges monetizing. Okay, and, um, and finally, you use your automatic content recognition to sync companion screens to what is happening on the main TV. Mm -hmm. What will targeted second screen ads bring to the party that targeted main screen ads cannot? 
The biggest thing there is interactivity. Uh, the second screen platforms are much more suitable for consumer interaction. Um, so pushing out uh, a, a targeted uh, set of interactive capability to that second screen ad while you're watching a replaced ad on the prime screen allows us to enable a whole set of consumer interactions that just wouldn't be possible through a remote control on the TV. Okay, great. That's a good place to end it. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me.